My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. interested and I'm not on tape which I rarely am for obvious reasons uh, being live actually you know is a cop out it's much more of a cop out than being taped a lot of people think taping you know, is a cop out but actually it's the other way around because I find that if you're if you're live you can't hear yourself and therefore you don't have the terrible qualms of conscience which the guy does when he's taped almost every guy I know who's taped walks around and looks embarrassed you know, for years. He hears himself. No, I'm very live. And, and uh, let's, let us officially say at this juncture now that Christmas is almost over. And I might uh, say before we go any further that I'm feeling irascible. But uh, that what happens late Christmas Day is most people, most people feel fat, uh, sort of decadent, and greasy, and kind of rotten. And, you know, you, you do everything too much. You just sort of sit around and look grimly into the middle distance. And I, this is not going to be one of those Robert Benchley-type programs talking about how terrible holidays are. They're not. Uh, the holiday itself is a phenomenon. I mean, all holidays. Uh, every, every tribe everywhere has the holiday thing. Ever, ever think much about that, the, the whole thing? Other than the actual reason for a specific holiday... But the fact that holidays exist in all cultures. And there's always one holiday, you see, that's bigger than all the others in every culture. They have one big giant bust, one big bust out, uh, whatever it happens to be. There's one tribe, for example, in some island out in the, in the Dutch Guiana group. When they have their big bust out, they all gather and they kill everything. They just hit everything for miles around and they all stand around and yell and holler. And then after they get through killing it, they eat it. Whatever it is they've killed, they eat, and then they all go home staggering, uh, you know, they're fat. And, of course, the thing that you got to understand is that all the rest of the year they don't eat at all. They're in the middle of a famine all the time. They have a perpetual one there. 
So the bust out comes once a year. Well, now, we have a, a love bust out once a year. You close the door there, I can hear him yelling and hollering. Ted's entertaining the whole crowd. So uh, we have, uh, we have a uh, uh, once a year big love bust out. And uh, our, our, uh, our family, of course, is, uh, is hardly anybody cares about anybody most of the year, just like those, in, those tribes out there in the Pacific. They don't eat much during the year, so once a year they eat. Well, hardly anybody cares about anybody else most of the year, really. I mean, we do a lot of talking. But then, then comes the big love bust out, and we have this fantastic thing, which is a great thing. But uh, it takes some interesting forms. For example, I, don't, I have a slight buzzing in my ears now at this point because I subjected to my, myself to roughly nine hours of listening to serious FM station Christmas programming. And there are very few things more ponderous, more or less joyous <laughs> I mean, uh, than, than the joyous programming of the serious FM stations regarding this, the most joyous uh, occasion of Christendom. Uh, it's a, kind of an interesting thing to hear some of it. Uh, I, I, one one station, for example, seems to confuse Christmas with, uh, I'd say, roughly the 17th century of English history. Uh, somehow they confuse Christmas with guys playing recorders. And uh, you never heard more recorder playing in your life. And bad recorder, what, that's, so, so, nothing is more depressing than tall, thin, Bennington blonde girls who have somehow wrangled the recording contract and are now blowing for some company called uh, Recorder Archives, something of that nature, you know, and they blow away on little known pieces of music from the 17th century, and they all pop up at Christmas time, and you can see why they're little known. Uh, they were bad when they were written, and they're bad today, which I, I, I like to say that man has, a, has an ability to sift the dross from the gold. But this never occurs, the FM stations. And then, of course, there's always the, the half-hour or sometimes the 17-hour program, which comes on by special tape from the BBC. And it features a distinguished British actor. And, and uh, he is doing selected readings from Christmas literature of the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. And so, little children, I am about to tell you the story of the Christmas elf. The Christmas elf one day was walking through the green sward, and he came upon a little girl, a little girl who had not been too good. <laughs> oh, uh, and you wonder who's listening to this? Certainly not the kids. They're all sitting there buried in, in Playboy or Mad Magazine, and Mama and Papa are, are flaked out. One is, one is sculled out on the daybed, and the other is trying to figure some way to get out and get down to the office. <laughs> just to get out, and 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 this the FM set the FM set is going. And so the little girl returned to her home and said, "Mother, I am going to tell you that tonight we are going to be visited by the Christmas elf, the Christmas elf, which is the spirit." Uh, oh boy, nothing is worse than a, than a than an English actor making an LP to be sold at Christmas time to serious kids by serious mothers and fathers who are Anglophiles from way back, one having gone to a well-known uh, English-oriented uh, ladies' school near Boston, and the other having been kicked out of Harvard at the end of the third year. And so, naturally, they're British to the core, and uh, they, they maintain that the recorder was the only... But then, of course, you can, you can go on and on about this thing. I, I heard, uh, I heard uh, one guy all night long... Uh, I turned on an FM station, and all night long, this guy was trying to get people to call him up. And there was a note of hysteria in his voice. This is this is a this is another kind of record a radio show which uh, <laughs> it passes for entertainment. And he he does things like this. You know, I want you folks out there to know that this program is for you. And uh, I, I'd like to say that we just had a wonderful conversation with. Jim out in Staten Island who says that they've decorated the tree there and uh, the kiddies are all in bed. And uh, we had a, a, a phone call from Gwen in Babylon. And Gwen said to say Merry Christmas to all and she's a regular listener. And blah, 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 blah. This goes on and on. And you wonder, wonder who these, who these cheeseheads are that are listening to other guys <laughs> making telephone calls 
and talking about other guys' telephone calls to somebody they don't know. But it goes on and on and on. And in between time, to show that the true spirit of Christmas is there, he is playing famous old Christmas melodies by Billy Daniels, uh, famous old Socko Christmas songs by Eddie Fisher, and various other uh, Christmas images of our world. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny, you know, there's a, there's a great deal of difference between the Christmas carol and the Christmas song, as turned out by the boys in the Brill Building. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great deal. although the, the, the uh, tendency today has been to meld the two, because when you write a Christmas song in the Brill Building, you get a lot of sleigh bells behind. It doesn't make any difference who's yelling it out. Paul Anka or Fabian, I think you, it's uh, you get the you get the bells going to uh, rock and roll sounds, you know. And you get, Christmas time, Christmas time, Christmas all the way, rick the ding ding, and it goes. It has nothing whatsoever to do, even remotely, with Christmas or or uh, anything. I, I've often wondered what uh, who was it, uh, Gregory. Yes, uh, Oh, the Gregorian chants. You want me to go into the to a long involved discussion of the of the Gregory of the Gregorian chants here tonight? <laughs> well, I I uh, I've got something here. Uh, I, I suppose this will be the only program done of this kind uh, this this time because the, I've noticed that whenever whenever Christmas time comes up comes around, there is a general looking toward Europe on the part of most of the radio stations and, in fact, on, uh, in the records shops and so on. By looking towards Europe, I mean this. We looked to Charles Dickens for Christmas. He was not an American. I, I hate to tell you this, but Mr. Dickens was English to the core. And uh, we either that or we, we often will look to uh, Italy. Uh, Italy seems to be a sort of uh, center of Christmas uh, France, oh, we have all kinds of French things in Christmas, the expression Noel and one thing and another. And, uh, and most of the radio stations and TV stations that are seriously doing something about Christmas will spend hours playing German Christmas songs. I heard uh, hour after hour last night of, of tall, heavy-set ladies singing uh, German songs, uh, Christmas songs, you know, they have a certain quality about them, which is very special and uh, really isn't part of the American Christmas scene. And I heard very little discussion of American Christmases, of really American Christmases on a serious plane, except uh, maybe the John Gambling kind. Uh, make sure to have a lot of things for the kids and uh, just have a good time, drive carefully. That seems to be the most important Christmas greeting that people give on the radio, that sort of thing. But not much discussion of uh, the American Christmas. Has, have you ever thought about, you know, when you see all these Western movies, have you ever thought of what Christmas was like in the West, in the frontier days? You know, they had Christmas then, too. And, and more so than we have, actually. Uh, because they were far more religious people, by and large, than we are today. By religious, I mean they... They really were orthodox religious people. And uh, have you ever thought much about Christmas uh, in, the, in the West, uh, say in the 1860s, 1840s, 50s, in that period? Well, it was a pretty interesting phenomenon, as a matter of fact, and there are certain accounts of it left around, uh, which, which, which should be brought out on Christmas time. We should, we should, we should read these things and, and talk about what they did in Christmas in Christmas past uh, in America. Do you know much about, say, Christmas in a place like uh, Wisconsin? Well, there's one thing they do uh, in, in these little towns out in the Midwest and even during places in places in the South. I don't know whether it extends much to the East. I haven't seen much of it here in the East, although uh, there is some evidence of it. Uh, in the Midwest, one of the big things for Christmas is the decoration of the town itself. Now, that, by that I don't mean some uh, merchant puts a big display in his window. Uh, somebody puts a big thing out, like the big cross, the big lights uh, up here on the Pan Am building. I'm talking about the town itself. It has a big operation, generally, and I can remember coming home from Christmas, for Christmas. Uh, oh, this has been uh, right after the war. I was driving from Cincinnati to Chicago. Now, driving from Cincinnati to Chicago, you drive through some of the most lush farm country in America, 
these gigantic Indiana farms and these, these huge southern, southern Ohio farms. And this is really beautiful farm country, but as flat as a board. It's just absolutely so flat that you can sometimes see when you're, when you're coming out of Lafayette, Indiana, for example, which is maybe 75, 80 miles south of Chicago. You can see the lights of Chicago in the distance just hanging up in the sky there. That, that's how flat that country is there. There's very little, very little uh, rolling hills there. Well, I can remember driving home because uh, radio stations, as you know, don't, don't turn off on Christmas. They don't turn off on any holiday. Uh, uh, in fact, radio stations are rarely dead. Speaking of dead radio, this is WORAM at FM New York. Ed, you look so sad. Of course, Ed, you know, that's not an editorial. It's just a, see, I can't help but if there's, if there's a, a stream of consciousness here going on and Freudian association, you know, I, it's not, it, it just came up at the station break time. It's not, I don't have to, you can't log that now. Nothing to do with that. But nevertheless, I can remember one night driving home uh, from, uh, there's a funny scene. It was a, it was a very odd scene. I, I had finished my radio show. And the one thing you know when you're on during a holiday is that there aren't like ten people listening. Just forget it, you know. Nobody's listening at all. Uh, and now I know that I'm talking to two guys in the control room, at least one. The other one is not here at all, except in body. Uh, <laughs> the guy out at the transmitter has been flaked out since 8 o'clock. He's just sitting there next to the fan there. And that's about, he's got a TV set going on, and it ain't channel whoopee either. That's the thing about it. The, the telephone operator here at the station has been watching television since the fall of 1951. And uh, she's been watching the same channel. It ain't nine, in case you're interested. She doesn't know what channel it is, but she, that's the only channel her set gets. And that lady does not even know she's in the radio business. And a matter, <laughs> matter of fact, once in a while when the phone rings and they say, I'm a listener, she says, what? She says, I'm a listener. Listener to what? She says, the radio station. And our telephone operator says, oh, well, all right. Uh, what do you want me to do about it? She says, well, I'm listening to you. She says, no, you're not. And that's the end of that. She cuts them off. Another nut sits there. I think she thinks she's at the stock exchange, and it's, it's late 1929, but that, which may be true. But nevertheless... Uh, so, so a guy working in a radio show has a very, very radio station at this time of year has a very difficult operation to, 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 uh, to bring himself up to the kind of tension that is required to maintain a uh, a show. You know, it's like an actor. It's it's, it's like an actor performing without a without an audience. You, know, you come out there and nobody's got the props, and you just sort of fool around. It's pretty hard to be Hamlet when there's nobody sitting out there in the seats really is. And especially when the stagehands are all sitting about behind there playing bingo and picking their teeth. It's, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and what's worse, when you look over to see if Polonius is around, Polonius is playing Pinochle with, uh, with Ophelia. So, you know, it's tough being Hamlet. But I'm driving home one night to Chicago from Cincinnati, and boy, was it, was it dark. It was really dark. I had finished my show, which was about 1 o'clock in the morning, quarter to 2, and I go out, and I get in my car, and I say, well, I'm going to go home for Christmas. I had to be back the next day for the next show. You say, well, I'm going to go home for Christmas. Well, that's about 350 miles from Cincinnati to Chicago, and it's through some of the darkest country this side of the Mojave Desert. I can tell you that. So I get into the car, and I whistle out of Cincinnati, and immediately, as soon as I get past Cleves, Ohio, it gets black. I mean, black is the inside of your pocket. It's really pitch black, and my... Ford is boring into the darkness and I'm whistling along and, and I got the radio on and I begin to pick up right away as soon as I got out of Cincinnati I pick up a guy who is broadcasting from Chicago and it is Christmas night and he is completely you can just hear him, he is just going along he's like just coasting he's got maybe, maybe one notch of his accelerator open there he's just got a very lean mixture coming through the carburetor and he is just coasting, and there, you, you could not, it, was, it would be impossible for me to tell you how much cool cynicism was coming through this guy. He was just sort of laying it out, and he was playing, he happened to be have a music show, and he was playing only the stuff that he wanted to play. He didn't care about the audience tonight, he, he knew there wasn't any, and so he was belting this stuff out, making smart, rotten remarks between every <laughs> record, and he was going along there, having a great time. 
And I always remembered that guy because uh, I, I, I tracked him all the way into Chicago that night. Later on, he became a very famous guy and went on to become one of the biggest entertainers in the TV radio business. But at that night and that time, I'm sure he doesn't even... He, he, had, he had 15 minutes of commercials that night, which he was doing, for a dance studio in Chicago. And you, 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 could, not, you could not imagine at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning any more really cynical dance commercials than this guy was putting on. Eddie, he, he, he would imply that if you came down to this place, you could find yourself dancing for the first time and probably the only time in your life with a female gorilla. If you've always wanted to dance with a gorilla, you can find one down there. And uh, not only that, if you are a gorilla, they don't care. You come down and you can dance with a pretty girl. For all of you rotten people, there's your chance. You know, he goes on. Well, it was great. I was whistling in on the beam there, listening to this guy. And uh, it was Christmas Eve. It, or not Christmas Eve, it was Christmas night. Well, the point that I'm getting to, as I was coming through these little towns, it was a curious thing to see as you are, say you're going up 52 or 41, U.S. 41, which bisects Indiana, goes directly right up Indiana, right whistling into Chicago. As you go through these tiny towns, little towns like Otterbein and Jerusalem, you should go through Jerusalem, Indiana, at 3.30 on, on Christmas night. That's an eerie experience. But uh, there is, there's the big sign that says Jerusalem, Indiana. And you come whistling at Jerusalem, by the way, is the way it's pronounced out there. You start coming into Jerusalem, and there's a great big white and black sign. It says Jerusalem, the garden spot of Indiana. It says it kind of angrily. And then you pass another sign that says Kiwanis meets Wednesday nights at the Five Fields Drugstore. Then you whistle on a little bit further. It says Burma Shave. There was a young man from Azizis whose ears were of two different sizes. One day he took his razor and whipped off his ear, and now he's using Burma Shave all the time. Whoopee. Well, you're driving along, and you're coming into a little town like, like Jerusalem or, or Versailles or one of those towns down in southern Indiana. And the first thing you see from about 40 miles out, Ed, is a Christmas tree glow in the sky. What they Because they leave the lights on all night there, you see. And the, and the town itself corks off about 9 o'clock. This is strictly 9 o'clock country, I'm telling you. They, 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 they just don't see anything on any television channel past 9.15. And they just they sort of doze off and they're gone. There's nothing else to do in that town, you know. You just sleep. Well, about a half a mile out, you begin to see what it is. And hanging across the street, they have these low lines of red and green lights hanging across the street, you know, in arches from one street lamp to the other, right down the main street. And on top of every on top of every street light and on top of every telephone pole. There is a, is a Christmas tree and usually some kind of a Santa Claus stuck up there. And these red and green lights and a few tinsel wreaths. And this extends the entire length of the main street. That means well over a block and a half. And, uh, and yeah, and as you come whistling into this sad little town, there's probably, uh, in many of those little towns, you'll come into these little places like... Uh, and in the background, in, the, in, 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 in my mirror, I can see those funny red and green lights that they hang over these little towns. You know, uh, the, the whole thing about it is that these towns celebrate uh, Christmas in a very different way. They don't celebrate it primarily by buying. And I, I want to I read something, if I can find it here. Uh, a great story, if I can find it now. I don't really know. Whether I had, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, I'm going to read you a George Aid story. Uh, no, that's not it. A George Aid story about Christmas in a little town. And George Aid, as you know, uh, was a fine. I, I met S.J. Perlman at a party the other night, and Aid is Perlman's favorite humorist. He says not only was he a superb humorist, but he was a magnificent writer. He could turn a phrase like nobody in American letters before or since. He could say, now if I could find this thing here, let's see. Oh, shucks. Um, mm -hmm. 
Let's see. The fable of the good fairy with the lorgnette. And why she got it good. <laughs> Great names. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I, I really want to read this to you because it's about Christmas time and how they celebrate it. A fable of the good people who rallied to the support of the church. The fable of the skittish widower. The fable of the canny commercial salesman. Let's see. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm just sorry that I can't find it here tonight. Um, any of you got your aid book out there? Your, you got your... Uh, Hmm. No, I can't find it. Uh, shucks. Uh, hmm. No, I'm just going to have to give it up because uh, I'd have to find it because there's so many of them in here, and um, it's a, it's a beautiful fable about shopping in a small town. Um, you want to take a look through this, Lee, if you'd like to, uh, and then see if you can find it here. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the fable of the guy who saved up his money to buy the gift. You remember that fable? The one about the Santa Claus? They, they're so quick. Do it in here. Where are you going in there for? Do it in here. Hey, hey, just uh, so you can read it. But, uh... I can. I, I wonder just how much uh, in the way of American Christmas we ever talk about here in this country. It's very little, uh, very very little. I, I remember uh, different towns and, and different ways they celebrated Christmas. I remember living in this, uh, as I say, in Indiana uh, when Christmas was. It is Ryan here, and I have a question for you. What do you do when you win? Like, are you a fist pumper, a woohoo, a hand clapper, a high fiver? I kind of like the high five, but if you want to hone in on those winning moves, check out Chumba Casino. At chumbacasino.com, choose from hundreds of social casino style games for your chance to redeem serious cash prizes. There are new game releases weekly, plus free daily bonuses. So don't wait. Start having the most fun ever at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, void, were prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus. If you or someone you know is having thoughts of suicide or experiencing a mental health or substance use crisis 988 provides 24 7 compassionate support and connection to trained counselors when you call text or chat 988 you'll be quickly connected to trained counselors who will listen to your concerns provide support and connect you to additional resources if needed there is hope the lifeline works you are not alone for 24 7 support just call text or chat 988 